How's it going guys? It's going off grid. And today we got another product that was sent for testing. This is all powers. It is a solar, what they used to call a solar generator or an all-in-one um, power station. And we're going to open it up. I already opened it up, but we're going to see what's in here and see how good it is. All right. So we got the power station out of its box here. And what it comes with is a carrying case for your cable. It's a fairly standard cable. A lot of computer power supplies and stuff use that. I like things that are standard. If you lose it, you can get another one. Got your warranty, your instructions, and owner's manual, all that stuff in there. Then we have the power station. This power station is has a 600 watt inverter. And they claim that's continuous, which is really impressive because this has a 300 watt hour battery. So what they did was they stuck a giant inverter in it and a high uh, output battery in it to keep the size factor small and the weight and everything fairly low. It's got uh, lithium phosphate or LiPo4 battery in here. 299 watt hours, 11.68 amp hours at 25.6 volts. Solar, max 220 watts, but if you plug this into the wall, it charges at over 400 watts, which charges this in, I believe, just less than an hour. It says an hour, though. Well, from a little bit of reading, it looks like you can use 100 watts each, but I think it's 200 watts max on all this, and I'm not sure if that includes the wireless or not, but... Uh, I tried the wireless on my phone, it works really well. And I wonder how I wonder if this is just live all the time because there is no button for it. So that would be very interesting. Okay, let's see which one will start the air conditioner. We'll start with the rock solar. And we'll go fan. That's just voltage. It never catches the inrush current anyways. And then we are gonna go on to air conditioning. Oh, not doing it. Oh, down to 40 volts. Wow. Okay, that's got a soft start. Won't do it. Interesting. I thought that was going to start, but it did not. Let's try the next one. Okay, let's turn the power station on. Hold the power button. There we go. It's booting up. Got 100% charge. We'll turn the inverter on. We should get a screen here. There we go. Let's look at the voltage. 109 volts, 110 volts. Okay. And let's turn it on again. That is fan. Seeing about 50 watts. Let's try air conditioning. Here we go. Holy crap, it started. Sitting at 110 volts still. Wow. Let's see here, watts here, that's low. There is a peak there for a second. So that doesn't catch peaks very well. The reading is extremely close. Wow, that's actually impressive. Normally, the readings on power stations or inverters are not even close to what a kilowatt hour says, or a kilowatt meter, I mean, which is very surprising. And it's running it, and it's saying it's gonna last for 56 minutes. Wow. Well, there you go. Already, I really, really like this power station. Just the fact that it started a 5,000 BTU air conditioner, and it's already putting out cold air. You can hear it, anyways. And that'll climb, and I'll keep climbing, and I'm going to let this run until we hit our peak watts. And then we'll get back to you. Okay, it's been about 10, 15 minutes. We're taking about 106 watts, or 406 watts, 400 on the power station. Pretty close readings there. Putting out ice cold air, 
and we're seeing another 36 minutes left at 88%. So, guys, if you got yourself a van, you got yourself a window air conditioner, and you just want to run it for about 45 minutes in the evening to cool yourselves before bed, 250 bucks. That's crazy. It'll do it. That's that's crazy. And you probably still have enough charge after that to charge your phone. That's really cool. In my opinion, that's the cheapest and best power station I've seen yet. Now, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of reviews. It's got a tiny fan that's going in here. You can barely hear it. If, if the AC wasn't running, you'd be able to hear it just slightly, but it's very quiet. It doesn't have a turbo setting or anything. It just has what it's doing now. Wireless charger works great. Tried it. So, we gotta try this in something else. We know it runs the air conditioner, works great. But only gonna run for about 50 minutes. No, less, about 30, probably 37 minutes I'm guessing. Once it hits uh, its full 420 watts, whatever it's taking now. All right, let's try something else. Here we just got a shot of the power station hooked to a 100 watt all powers solar panel and we're getting 95 98 are we getting 100 watts 100 watts there we got our rated capacity here rated uh, wattage there we're dropping in percentage real quick because I'm pulling what is it we're pulling 674 watts it's crazy well Got full rating. This panel didn't make near as much power on my other uh, power station because it doesn't have MPPT charge controller. This one does. Oh, come on, Blair. There we go. Pretty cool. Get it back off. See you guys in the next one. And check this out, guys. Now we're charging. Now, when you go over 80%, just like an electric car, it starts slowing down the charging. But this is over 400, if this was under 80%, this is over 400 watts the whole time. It's about 417 watts, something like that. 420-ish. And from 0% to full charge is one hour, taking that into account. So that means it gets to 80% really quickly. Like, I don't know how fast it gets there. Maybe like 35, 40 minutes. Takes the other 20 minutes or so to get you up to 100%. And really, really, really like this fast charge feature. This feature would be really good for somebody that has an RV or is camping with a generator. And they want to use this. It's cloudy. So you got to run your generator. So you run it for one hour. You get a full charge on your power station. A lot of other power stations don't have a one hour fast charge. And it, it always boggled my mind that nobody had a fast charge. Like, you got to have a fast charge. Like, in, in camping, you, you don't want to be running a generator more than you have to. One hour is the most I want to run a generator. And if you can run it for an hour and then just use this the whole time after that, like, I'm not sure what their bigger power stations are like in charge times, but this is really good. I like the quick charge. Forgot to mention, here's the fan noise. You're right beside the unit. Now you're about two feet away. It's very, very quiet. And we're gonna try the microwave and see how long it runs for. Wow, 890 watts. Holy smokes, I can't believe it actually pushed that much. That was incredible. And now we have a code E2. Holy smokes, guys, that's crazy. Let's turn the light on here. Wow, okay, if what happens if we just cycle it?
and the power came back on. We still have a code. It, it looks like it's storing a code, E2. That's cool, man. Holy smokes. What? That's that's a huge surge. That's like a 900 watt surge. And that's not like a few like millisecond surges because most most of the time when they say 600 watt inverter, 1200 watt surge, like the, that surge is supposed to be for a few milliseconds just to start start something that we're talking about. That was a few seconds. That's getting into uh, low frequency inverter territory where you can do that for multiple seconds at a time, which is awesome. That means that that inverter is extremely overbuilt. So it's technically, they, they could technically rate this like a 900 watt inverter and then say it's running watts or 600, but they don't. They just call it a 600 watt, which is nice. I like companies that do that because it doesn't trick the customer. The customer just gets what they paid for and a little extra. We got to be fair here now. I don't expect that, that little power station to start this compressor with 120 PSI behind it. Now, we're almost at zero. A little bit left. What do you guys think? Think it's going to start it? Turn that on. I don't know if I should turn the inverter on first or the compressor, but let's turn compressor off, inverter on first. Okay, so we're at 69%, not even full. And we're going to try this. I don't know if this is fair to this thing or not. I don't think it is, but here we go, guys. What the heck? How? How did that start that? And it, there, it wasn't even a soft start. It just full out started it. Maybe they're finally starting to overbuild inverters and they're, they're good. And the price is incredible. I don't know what to say. I'm blown away. I don't know. If I didn't have one of these and I knew it was this good, I would definitely buy one. I might buy... I, I already know I'm, I'm going to buy a couple of their, and their flexible solar panels. I really like them. I'm going to put that on the front of my trailer. But dang, really happy with this thing. This thing is sweet. Okay. Well, in conclusion... I really like this power supply. The old one there, that was pretty good for back when it came out. It wasn't bad. I was impressed with it at the time. But this blows it out of the water in almost every way. So let's turn it on. Turn the inverter on. And turn it off just in case. Just, just fast enough. We'll turn the fan on high, give it already a load of 70 watts, 71 watts it looks like. Now let's try the air conditioner again. Let's see if we can do it. Here's the fan on the air conditioner. And then here's the compressor. Holy smokes, it did it. There was a split second where that fan slowed down for a split second. Wow, I would be very interested in testing a bigger unit because this one's very impressive. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll have a link in the description. I, no affiliate, nothing, just, just straight from Amazon. And if all powers would be so kind maybe to give me a discount code for you guys. I know that uh, Amazon right now currently has $30 off, which is really, really good deal. You get that for about 250 bucks Canadian.